Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing modeling with functions. Let's do an example. The question says, find a formula that models the radius of a circle in terms of its area. Let's work through this solution. So to start the problem, we're going to write down the formula for the area of a circle. The area of a circle is A, and it's equal to pi times r squared. The question wants us to find a formula for the radius of a circle in terms of its area. So we basically have to solve this for r. To solve this for r, because it's being multiplied by pi, we can get rid of it by dividing by pi. And what you do to one side, you do to the other, so divide by pi. These cancel. And so we get a over pi, and that's equal to r squared. I'm going to write this with the r squared on the left-hand side like this. This is really r squared equals a over pi. Because the r is being squared, we can get rid of the squared by taking the square root of both sides like this. And because r is a variable term, when you take the square root, technically you do get a plus or minus. So in this case, we would get r equals plus or minus the square root of a over pi. However, if we think about this physically, r is the radius of a circle, so r has to be positive. So r is going to be equal to the square root of a over pi. And it's probably worth mentioning something about A. It's an area, so it's going to be positive. That means the square root is positive because you're taking the square root of a positive number, and there's no issue, right? A can't be zero because then R would be zero, and plus A is an area, so we want it to be positive because we need R to be positive as well. So that would be a formula that models the radius of a circle in terms of its actual area. You could actually plug in the area, divide by pi, and take the square root, and you would get the radius of the circle. Let's go ahead and do one more example. A rectangle has a perimeter of 50 feet. Find a function that models its area in terms of the length of one of its sides. Let's work through this one solution. Let's start by drawing a picture of a rectangle. So here is our rectangle and we're told something about its perimeter. We're told it's 50 feet. So if we call this x, then this is also x. And if we call this y, then this side here is also y. And because the perimeter is 50 feet, we know that if we add up the length of all of the sides, we get 50. So x plus x is 2x plus, and then y plus y is 2y. So 2x plus 2y is equal to 50. So that's what the first sentence tells us. The question wants us to find a function that models its area in terms of the length of one of its sides. So the area, I'll we'll call it a, is going to be equal to x times y. It's the length times the width. However, this is a function of two variables. We want it to be in terms of the length of one of its sides. So what we can do is we can take this top equation here and we can solve it for, let's say, y. So if I subtract uh, 2x from both sides like this, end up with 2y equals 50 minus 2x. Then you can divide everything by 2. You can divide both sides by 2, or you take a shortcut and divide each term by 2. That gives you y equals, let's see, 50 over 2 is 25 minus, and then 2x over 2 is just x. So now what you can do is you can take this y and you can plug it back in here. So then a is equal to x times y, but we know y is 25 minus x. So a, which is the area, is equal to, let's see, x times 25 is 25x, minus, and then x times x is x squared. And that would give us a formula that we want. This models the area in terms of the length of one of the sides. 
So a recap, we started by drawing a rectangle. We were told the perimeter was uh, 50, so we labeled the sides. And so x plus x plus y plus y, that's just 2x plus 2y. That's equal to 50. We know the area is x times y. But the question says they want it in terms of just one of the sides. We took our equation 2x plus 2y and we solved for y. We got this for y and then we plugged it back into our formula for area. And then we just distributed the x and then here we have our model. Pretty cool. Hopefully you've learned a lot of math in this video. If you have, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck.